over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, mother I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. You're doing 100 mile an hour with lights and sirens. Well, lights. You, you were running sirens. <laughs> Why are you trying to be a cop? In today's video, we'll be watching self-important imposters manage to almost fake it till they make it and pretend to be officers of the law. However, eventually, they all must face the stark reality that their delusions will always just be nothing but delusions. On September 16th, 2019, Orange County, Florida, police would be out on a hunt for a strange character by the name of Jeremy DeWitt, a convicted sex offender and a serial police impersonator. The following is footage from DeWitt's own body cam he carried around, like actual officers do. Last two vehicles. Silver minivan following a red hatchback. Silver minivan following a red hatchback. Keep driving if you're a part of slide over. Initially, we see him acting in place of an officer, even riding a state motorcycle, hilariously going around town and bossing people in peak trolling fashion. I need a unit now. I need a unit now. Where is my backup? Other one's moving. Yellow shirt, take that light. KC, take that light. Nerds, move up. Left lane. Stay on your horn. I don't hear you using it at all. Hey, the light Get the fuck over! What are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing, dumb Get the over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the out before you start talking and cutting us off. I'm not do, cutting anyone. Go ahead and pull your little phone out. I'm not cutting Do your little Google off. search and figure out what we're doing and what I we legally what allow. Doing. Good. Then back off and give us room. I'm not, you're a, I'm not interfering with you at all. You are by you are running blocking, along. You've been blocking traffic. Yeah, I need you to stay to the side, sir. Dude. That's what the legal I'm law is. The Go back and look it up. 316. Call the Good. Call, call it. Now. Please. 911 right now. I'm not calling 911. Go ahead. Call the 911 right now. DeWitt's audacity and his attitude with everyone around him was astounding. The way he tried to herd the traffic like an official officer of the law. At least one man didn't take his BS and even pointed out the obvious that he wasn't an officer, but an ego tripping maniac. <laughs> Just ran the red light with the whole escort. Heavy sand and debris in my intersection. Heavy sand and debris. You know we're treading on somebody else's jurisdiction for the first time today, right? You know that makes me hard as right? Yeah, but we should. All I guess DeWitt really was aiming to be the most insufferable man that day through his behavior alone, excluding the fact that he was committing a felony, and luckily, he wouldn't get away with it, as DeWitt would shortly be charged with impersonation of a police officer. Alright, that's fine. Alright, so, obviously we're here because uh, of an incident that occurred, uh, this is back on September 17th, right? 
Oh, September 16th, 16th, I believe. <clears throat> Yeah, 16th. 16th, okay. Alright, so... If you want, Grant, tell us what, what happened that day. What, what what was your function that day? What were we all doing in there? Okay. Just take us from start sure. to uh, up to the incident. Uh, so as you know, we were doing it for Walden's funeral home. Sergeant Bittler has already made contact with them. So what we under How it started, we had the funeral home, or the, uh, the church, I'm sorry, in Eatonville. Um, we left Eaton Mill, heading towards Mills, 1792. Came up on Mills, made the right, kept the funeral in the far right lane. We stayed in the left. Um, who, started, stayed, who stayed in the left? Uh, our, our guys stayed in the left. In the left? Left lane, okay, okay. three. Okay. Um, as we moved down, um, <clears throat> we went through Winter Park, not a problem. Uh, as we came up to um, DeWitt would end up being arrested and, on September 26th, voluntarily be interrogated by the officers on what happened that day. Uh, my last unit reported that there was a black Dodge Ram that was cutting into the funeral. The families were blaring their horns. Um, we, didn't, we didn't make contact with him at that point. I was like, well, maybe he's going to turn uh, at um, or or Orange, or I'm sorry, Orlando to head towards the hospital. Um, he didn't. Uh, he continued riding with the funeral. Uh, the family was trying to speed up and go around him. Um, every time the cars tried to go, this is what my last unit was advising. I didn't see this myself. Um, every time the, the cars tried to go up and around him because they knew he wasn't part of the funeral, he would try to weave in front of them so they couldn't go around. And just stop me real quick? Sure. So let me ask you, how do they know that this vehicle is not part of the funeral procession? Uh, it didn't have its high beams or hazards on. Um, and so without okay, sound. So, so it didn't have headlights or hazards on. Okay, that's what I want to make sure of, okay. And without sounding disrespectful or, or cause I'm, I'm definitely very far from racist. Um, it was a, it was a very, very important, prominent person of the black community mm -hmm. and Usually when white people are in a black funeral, they don't belong or vice versa. Um, and then we, when we were leaving the church, also when we were making the right on the mills. Ah, uh, yes, the classic, I'm not racist. But then they proceed to say something racist. DeWitt really could not help but make himself look more and more like a dude bag. Well, there, for some reason there's something going around. I don't know if it's you or Sergeant Villa or Orange County Sheriff's Office. I don't really understand and everyone keeps asking the same question. And now I have a Department of Labor lady at my office talk, trying to talk to us. And I, it could be Tony. I, I don't really know at this point. Who's, wait, who's Tony? Uh, the landlord that we're trying to evac from as fast as possible. Uh, okay, so this, that's where you were? Uh, uh, 1790 or 1725 Lira. Lira, okay, okay, yes, okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I, for some reason, there's, I don't know why, there's a question about the employees, my men are employees are all 1099 contractors, so I don't really understand what that has to do with anything, but that's neither here nor there, so I'm just making it very clear while I'm explaining now that the contractors that I hired that day were working for me. How many contractors? Did you there was a total above sub six. Six. So. so there was, in just layman terms, there was six, uh, there was five employees plus you, correct? If we're saying employees per Lame as okay, terms, well, short. Sure. Even if, if it's 1099, it's right. still an employee, it's just that they're, they're responsible contracted for, for it. themselves. Right. 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 They're responsible for their own. Roger. Uh, <clears throat> they provide their own equipment. They're responsible for providing their own gas. They're re responsible for providing everything. All you're doing is saying, come, <coughs> come work with yes. me on this and yes. you pay them. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Right. Okay. So there's a total of six. Okay, go ahead. Um, so as we crossed Orlando Avenue, uh, the funeral, because it goes to two lanes, we started to shift them over to the next lane, which is technically the center lane of uh, Mills at that point. Um, the truck then continued to follow with them. Um, at Orlando and Mills, my rear officer or rear man said to him, hey. The Wits cover story was that he was actually escorting a funeral procession with five other men on contract who conveniently aren't present in his body cam footage. He continues to accelerate. Princeton and Mills. How fast was he going when he accelerated towards you? 
Well, he was in the funeral line, and they were doing, like I said, about 25. So at that point, he slowed down. So I'm thinking he was going to turn right, and I advised my guys. I was like, he's probably turning right here. Um, to, how fast was he going when he accelerated towards you? How fast was he going? Because then you said he accelerated. So was he, like, doing 25? Well, he as he slowed or? down like he was going to stop almost, okay? Uh -huh. uh, and then he <clears throat> angled towards me, turned towards me, and then he accelerated. You could hear the engine rev. That's... I can't tell you how fast he was going. He was coming directly at me. Okay. So uh, he's coming. I hit the hood. I hit it a couple times to push myself off. Um, I fall back. I grab my balance. I stand up. As I'm standing up, he's ha he has the window down. Um, he advised me. He's like, you want to go to jail? I was like, what, what are you talking about? He, I'm like, you're in a funeral. You keep cutting in and out of the, fam the funeral. The family's telling you to get out. You got to get out of the funeral. He's like, I'm a police officer. I'm going to take you to jail. I was like, you're going to take me to jail for what? You keep cutting in and out of the funeral. You need to get out. At this point, he laughs, rolls up the window, and cuts right back into the funeral, cuts the funeral off, and the family has to slam on their brakes, and they're hitting their horn. At this point... DeWitt recounted his first run-in with a real cop who allegedly cut into a funeral procession. Despite his attempts to sound reasonable, his previous body cam suggests otherwise. And that's where it was. Next thing you know, um, two lieutenants show up, Sergeant Miller shows up, on and on. Okay. So once, once uh, the lieutenants showed up and Sergeant Miller, what, what, what occurred then? Um, they talked to him over by his vehicle. They talked to us. They asked us. They asked me to write a statement. I believe they had uh, Randall write a statement too, it, and recycle, if I remember correctly. I'm sorry, I don't remember. Um, but I believe they wrote statements as well. Um, at that point, Sergeant Villar, uh, well, I mean, came over and told me he was there to arrest me. But ultimately, after he talked to the deputy. I guess one on one, he came back and asked me to write a statement. So um, wait, so Sergeant Miller walked right up to you and said the first thing he said to you is, "I'm here to arrest you." No, he didn't say I was. He, he didn't say I'm here to arrest you. He said I, I came here with my with the full intention to arrest you. But as I'm talking to some people, I can see that maybe the story is not exactly what it was. Okay. He talked to the officer. He came back and he said, "I need you to write me a statement." Okay. At that point, of course, um, there was in question about what ASAP was wearing. Um, and well, the 15 ASAP Randall Brochus. Okay. And what was he wearing? He's a K, G, and D instructor. Um, and he showed me the statute and said, as long as he's in uniform, he can wear his weapon. Uh, I'm not a 90 uh, uh, security company, whatever they could, 93, 93 or um, so. He showed me the Florida statute, said he's allowed to wear his weapon. Um, however, once you, as Sergeant Biller did, expand on that statute, it basically says you can't wear a weapon unless you're working for that company that's the security company that has the license for the weapon. I was unaware of that. Um, that's my fault. Um, I didn't, I figured being he being a K instructor, he would be giving me the proper information. The lieutenant would rightfully point out the gear of one of the men that DeWitt worked with, police gear that was bought from other sources, but wasn't legal to carry. And so if somebody is already saying that you were upset, that you were mad that this individual was in there, in the escort and you've already made it clear that several of your people came across him and were trying to get him to come out of it so by this time you were probably a little ticked that he wouldn't get out so that's what I'm saying is if nothing was done wrong then there's not an issue don't get all upset I mean, it is what it is people complain all the time and we just like yep eh, you know what this is what happened sure look at it how you want but well Corp I can promise you that if I can't get the video today I will get it to you because in no time was I upset I actually I was like, well, let me see what I can do and try to get him out. That's the blatant lying in this interrogation is downright hilarious. This man is such a goofy poser, you'd think he'd have given up after one try. The determination is admirable. You're doing 100 mile an hour with lights and sirens. Well, lights. You, you weren't running sirens. <laughs> Why are you trying to be a cop? On the 4th of November, 2021, James Tedesco, a son of a well-respected executive, would be pulled over by a police officer in the Indian River County, Florida, for speeding. What should have been a routine stop quickly became a bizarre surprise to the officer. Deputy Gruber with the Indian River County Sheriff's Office, just letting you know this traffic stop's being audio been recorded. You have your license and registration. Okay. 
thing that Tedesco made sure the officer knew was his supposed position as a retired firefighter, despite just vaguely claiming he was heading to work at a station. I came from Mims, Florida. Okay, and why are we running code? Right. You see the issue we're having? Yeah, I got you, I got you. See, yeah, it's my fault. So you're doing 100 mile an hour with lights and sirens. Well, lights. You, you weren't running sirens. So why are you trying to be a cop? Not. Who else has red and blues? Fire department. Is this a fire department vehicle? No. Does this fly in New York? It does? Well, I'll make a phone call real quick. The officer noted the fact that Tedesco was out with police sirens and straight up confronted him for it. However, police L sirens wouldn't be the only thing in Tedesco's possession, finding his whole story suspicious. So you're not an ACC vehicle. And you're not your story. I asked you where you came from, all you would tell me is up north. And then after the third time I asked you where up north means, you stated Mims. Do you live in Mims? What were you doing in Mims? All right, actually, let me even back it up one more further, just to cover all bases. All right, have you ever been read your rights? All right, you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Do you understand that? You have the right to talk to a lawyer, have a lawyer pre present with you while you're being questioned. Do you understand that? If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before questioned. Do you understand that? So, I'm, I, I, I want to sense. connect these dots. Yeah, yeah. Why were you in Mims? I was fishing. You I were was fishing down. in Mims. Fort Pierce, then I came up to Mims to go fishing. You were in Fort Pierce, right, my came up to Mims to go fishing. Firehouse from here, right? And now you're back. going back to where, back. Miami? Fort Pierce and then North Miami. Your first stop's Fort Pierce. Do you live in Fort Pierce? I have a fireman has a house there. Okay, so you live in Fort Pierce, and then you're and then you're going. Your end goal is to go to Miami. Where do you work at in Miami? I don't work. In what are you doing going to Miami then? So when I asked you earlier, you said you now work in Miami, and that was a lie. I was going to a fire in Miami. The officer would place him under arrest and interrogate him, and wouldn't you know, Tedesco's story quickly began falling apart. Alright, do me a favor, hop in here right now until we figure all this out. Got it? Alright, hang tight. Oh, 100%. That's the only light he has? Yeah, it's red, blue, red, blue. Can I take this? Uh, yeah, are you taking it? No. Oh, I don't mind taking it. This is great knowledge for me. But I'm gonna call his... I'm gonna call and make sure he's actually employed. He just tried whispering as soon as you walked away, he came up to me and he goes, hey, uh, you know, I was in 9-11 and all this stuff. Could you please work with me, blah, blah, blah. I don't think he's active. I've got his ID on my seat. I don't think he's supposed to be a firefighter. Is there weed in there? No. Oh, oh, cigarettes. Oh. Convening with his partners, the officer expressed his distrust in Tedesco and so decided to check if any of his claims were actually real. I can't smell much, it's FYI. What's up? You guys smell something. No. Hello? 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 Well, hey, do me a uh, fire department in New York City expires February 1st. This this Hi, is this a fire station? Hi, 
Hi, this is Deputy Gruber with the New River County Sheriff's Office. Is there a lieutenant or somebody I can speak to? Thank you, sir. Well, he gave me an active number to a fire station. Bill, you're in Dude, this buddy. You're in Florida. How are you doing, sir? Is this a lieutenant for the fire station? That's fine. That's fine. If, you, if you're acting in command or something. So, I've got a real issue here. I'm a deputy for the sheriff's office in Indian River County, Florida. I am a deputy for Indian River County in, in Florida. Do you have his ID on you? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Do you know a James J. the Fourth Ted Ted Tedesco? J. the Fourth. You're, is he an active firefighter at your department? He's a retired member, so he's not active. He's not active with you guys. Yeah, he's uh, running lights and sirens down an interstate, telling me he's on his way to a fire in Miami. And so all of Tedesco's lies would come to a screeching halt as his supposed fire department confirmed he was retired, meaning he had no business running the sirens that he was. All right. Can Yep, he's in his personal car. Which, but can you do me one more favor just to help this whole situation out? Was he active with you during 9 11? So after 9 11. Ask him how he got yeah, oh yeah, he tried name dropping that. He was a firefighter during 9-11 and all that, so he was asking for forgiveness. Tedesco's lies reached a special absurdity, claiming to be a heroic firefighter, all just to probably get through traffic faster with his fake. All right, sir, hang tight. All right, so right now you're not under arrest. You can send me to search your vehicle to make sure there's nothing else that I need to worry about if you are cut loose. You don't have a problem with that? Okay, right. where are they located? They're in the cases in the back seat. In the cases in the back seat? And then one's in the trunk. Okay, like I said, I want to search the vehicle and make sure there's nothing else dangerous, hazardous, or any of that stuff. So there's two back seat of the vehicle oh, like in, the back, in the case, back, in the back yeah. trunk area. Right. That's it. Nothing else? There's not. And there's How much? Okay. All right. Well, Let me shut this. Like a, you can, okay. You can the hair, dude. Yep, give me one. Go. Here, go. Yeah, just turn around. Which one? Alright. Hey Tommy, come here for a sec. I'm gonna loosen these up for him. And I just want you here. I'm gonna do two handcuffs to help your shoulders out. appreciate that. Although after all his disrespectful lies, Tedesco had the integrity to be open about the illegal substances he was carrying around. All right. All right, do me a favor, hop back up. And then, uh, I can tell you, I can just tell you where the marijuana is. You're fine. They'll search it if they find it. I'll let you know. That's all I got. Okay. If that's, like I said, that's all I got. We can work with that. So, I wasn't trying to be Okay. All right, let me get you to hop up there. Perfect. All right, hang tight for me, all right? And with that came an end to Tedesco's little rodeo. The officers would search his vehicle and would discover the two fire, as well as 20 grams of...
as well as hats and jackets that belonged to the DEA and NYPD. He was arrested, processed, and sent to the county jail about two and a half hours later, records show. Tedesco posted a $26,000 bond shortly after 12.30 p.m. Tuesday and was released pending a December 30th first court appearance, according to the records. Let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video, subscribe so you can take advantage of the next one we have in store for you. Thanks for watching. This is Detective Mystery signing off.